Welcome back. If you've just joined the channel, it is breaking news that leads your bulletin this uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, some rather shocking news. Uh, the former real estate agent Vicky Momberg, the convicted racist, uh, has now been sentenced to three years in the Randberg Magistrates Court. One year uh, suspended for three years under the condition that she does not reoffend. Uh, perhaps let's get some analysis immediately with you. Uh, NTA's senior researcher Angela Fick is in studio with us. I want to just go back to that rather sort of shocking few moments in court, we've, which we've now apologized to our viewers for, where the magistrate read out uh, verbatim what was said in that video. Uh, full use of the F word, the K bomb, it was all read out, and we were rather stunned in studio. But it goes to show just exactly how shocking that racist rant, in fact, was. Quite, and uh, I think it was important for the magistrate to remind everybody in that courtroom exactly what it was that was said and what was not being repented for. Because again, repentance and remorse are very complicated situations. We know from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission almost two decades ago that it is precisely this question of when do we tell that somebody is actually remorseful for their actions and whether they've learned from it or whether they're simply sorry that they got caught um, and whether they've not actually changed their mind about what it is that they felt or believed or said. Angelo, of course, uh, many would argue that this would be harsh, but on the other side, the magistrate says we need to make this a deterrent. This should not be happening in South Africa. It should not take us back to a racist country. Quite. And what I think this does contribute to is the long delayed process, that unfinished business of the so-called so denazification of South Africa, the kind of de apartheid if you want to use such an awkward word, but the idea of unlearning the business of apartheid and colonialism about how we think about one another, that has to be actively encouraged. And some of that has to be punished if people refuse to move with the times. I mean, we are now a quarter of a century on from the processes of 1993 that gave us democracy in 1994. So it is rather tragic that somebody who is as young as Vicky Momba continues to invest in this kind of belief and is unrepentant about professing these beliefs in public. What do you reckon will be some of the reactions uh, across the country this morning as, as people sort of wake up to the news of the sentence? One of the lines that the, the, the magistrate also said when she was reading out this judgment is that outrage to racism should not be condescendingly seen as an overreaction. But there will be some among us who will see it as that. There will be people who will feel that this is an attack on, I mean, one has heard it in social circles that white people should now increasingly be careful of what they say. But I mean, they should have been careful about what they say for at least 25 years. This is the stuff that J.M. Kutsia wrote about in Giving Offense. Uh, this process of naming and having lost the power to name people in demeaning and dehumanizing ways is precisely what we were fighting for uh, removal of and what we were striving to get out of the system of the South African public domain but also of the private domain. So this is not just about what you will and won't say in public, this is actually about changing your belief systems and understanding that you live in the contemporary world, that ideas you may have learnt in 1975 or in 1982 are actually not just illegitimate, they're actually just wrong at the factual level. And so I think a lot of unlearning has to happen as well as relearning. And perhaps this kind of deterrent will allow many South Africans to rethink not just the words that they use, but their conceptions about the people that we live among, whether this is based on race or sexuality or gender or class or language or region or, you know, even somebody's ability or disability. I think this is not about political correctness at all. This is about recognizing in relation to the Constitution and the vision of the post-1994 era that all of us should be recognized as fully human and the way in which we not only speak of one another but think of one another will have to shift in order to live out that mutual human recognition. Angela, this will be seen as a turning point in how we deal with racism in South Africa. It's the first time someone is being jailed for using the K-word. Is it the right way to take this discussion, a very awkward discussion, many would say, forward? I don't think it is the solution. 
but it is certainly one of the many components that South Africans should have available to them to change their society. We did not become a deeply racist and dehumanizing society under colonialism and apartheid by accident or nature. It was an engineered process. Thinking that simply accident or nature is going to take us away from those ideas is not going to work. So in addition to education, in addition to rethinking how we figure one another in representation on television, in films, in books, in how we speak of one another on radio programs, also, we need to use the justice system to remind one another that actually there should be censure of people who don't. So, for example, if you robbed somebody of their mobile telephone or of their, um, you know, household goods, there's a social, there's a justice system that kicks in and punishes you. There's also a social system that kicks in and punishes you if you're a convicted criminal. And so, our intolerance of racism is what should match our intolerance of other forms of crime, because. Ex, it's not just the expression of racism that is a crime, but it is racism itself that is criminal because its consequences are so severe, not just for the people who are the so-called victims or to whom are the objects of the racism, but it's also impoverishing for the people who are the racists and for their children, for young white people to grow up in a scenario where you have this endless dehumanization of the people around you as casual discourse has a consequence for those young white people. It curtails their ability to make sense of the world they live in and it also somehow limits their experience of the Republic of South Africa after 1994 um, in its full, um, shall we say, humanity and also its full beauty because if you have these ideas about people that allows you to think of them as these dehuman, uh, dehumanized creatures who are not fully human, you miss the beauty of their languages, you miss the beauty of our poetry uh, in, in our languages, you miss the ability to make sense of people's worldviews, their humor, their jokes, their un and that is to rob one's child of a fully human experience in a country that has so much beauty in it. And that's the tragedy of so much of this racism. Absolutely. It's not just uh, the victim that is the one who is a victim victim of this uh, tragedy. Uh, if you've just joined us, it's coming up for quarter to 10 this morning. Convicted racist Vicky Momberg has been sentenced to three years in jail, one of which has been suspended for three years on condition she does not reoffend. The Roundwood Magistrates Court says it made several considerations in its ruling on the Vicky Momberg. Uh, let's take a listen to the magistrate in that case. She has expressed genuine remorse with strong feelings of guilt for her irresponsible and disgraceful conduct and the chances of her reoffending are minimal should she receive optimal treatment. Cumulative effect of sentences, the possibility of genuine rehabilitation is apparent. De-individuation and desensitization. Ms. Momberg was in a state of severe trauma on the night in question. She was provoked prior to her offense and the accused was a victim of a violent life-threatening crime. She was a victim of a life-threatening crime of an attempted hijacking and a smash and grab. She acknowledged her behavior and expressed apologies before the court. Regarding the aggravating circumstances, none of the complainants proved any serious impact in them in that none of them sought treatment or counseling nor suffered any financial loss. So she acknowledged her behavior, but then there's that issue around remorse versus regret. Quite, and also simply because people don't seek counselling. If black people in South Africa had to seek counselling every time we experience racism, we would spend our days in nothing but counselling. And this is something that I think has to be crucially. It's a bit like saying every time a woman is dehumanised in a femicidal society by casual misogyny, she should seek some sort of counselling to prove that the misogyny affected her. This stuff is so ubiquitous, it's actually you know, quite frightening that somebody could still have this logic. Um, but beyond that, I think it's also crucial for us to, to recognise that this isn't just about whether or not people suffer financial and economic um, consequences that are negative as a consequence of racism. It is what happens every day to human beings in this country that has to be dealt with. And some of those human beings aren't adults and aren't capable of defending themselves. Somebody like me, tough skin, old enough, can buffet this and buffets this on a daily basis. So when you have, for example, the South African Institute of Race Relations that reports that uh, double-digit figure, majority of black South Africans reported that they've not experienced racism, one has to ask the question about that research, but also what country do these people live in? Mm. Because how you define racism is not just about the use of these obscenities that Vicky Momberg, it's the attitudes and the treatment of people, who earns what amount of money, um, who is valuable, 
who has the right to perform certain kinds of labor, who has the ability to be taken as being a valuable contributor and who is an affirmative action employee. All of those are on the spectrum. Um, of the varieties of racism that we see in South Africa, that we experience in South Africa. And I think what this judgment and sentencing allows is for people to realize that actually it's a different country. It is very late for us to make this realization, but it is a different country. And certain kinds of things that you may have grown up believing and doing and thinking should stop being the way in which you live in the world, because those habits are deeply damaging, specifically to people who don't always have the power to speak back. And so in a sense, this is for me, like the Me Too moment, like the Time's Up moment in the rest of the world, a moment for people who continue to invest in racist ideas and think they can do so casually in public spaces, in public domain spaces, to rethink what it is that they should be doing in order to signal that they are members of the contemporary South African society. All right, Angela, we'll continue our conversation with you in a moment. Let's get more reaction now. We're going to speak to Gashwal Brooks, who's the spokesperson for the Human Rights Committee.